So earlier today, Affinity released version 2.0 for all three of their creative apps, which would be Designer, Photo, and Publisher. Vector design is my area of expertise though, so in this video I'll be focusing on Affinity Designer in particular. Now, if you're familiar with some of the work that I do here on YouTube and on my website, then you already know that I've done extensive reviews of Designer in the past where I've compared it to other vector apps like Inkscape and Adobe Illustrator. And although I think Designer is an excellent design tool, my overarching takeaway has always been that it's more of a jack of all trades rather than a master of one. And this is because, although it does have some unique features like image editing and vector-based adjustment layers, it lacks some of the key tools and features found in the more advanced vector tools like perspective transformations, image editing, and shape building tools. All of that has changed as of today though because Affinity Designer has received some significant updates, and in this video I'll be going over a few of them. Now before I get started, I should mention that version 2.0 is not a free upgrade. Even if you've purchased it in the past, you're going to have to pay for a new license to get the upgrade. But in my opinion, it's well worth it because it's still cheaper than paying monthly for Illustrator, and the new features are so good that it puts Designer on the same level as Illustrator in my opinion. So let's have a look under the hood to see what we're working with. Getting us started here, the first change you'll notice is a modest upgrade to the user interface. The layout is still the same for the most part, but the tool icons have been given a nice little makeover. Now, there was nothing inherently wrong with the previous icon designs, but these new icons are a refreshing take after all. And most importantly, it isn't so radically different that it will look unfamiliar when you see it for the first time. So if you're concerned about this new layout disrupting a workflow that you've already established, then there's no need to worry. It's still the same where it matters, but with just enough changes to feel like a refreshing new take. The biggest upgrade that comes with version 2.0, in my opinion anyway, is the ability to make warp transformations. This is something I've been very critical of Designer about in the past. Not being able to change the perspective of objects and warp them into different shapes has always been a deal breaker for someone like me who designs logos, and because of that, I've always had a hard time taking Designer seriously as a vector tool. But all of that has changed now thanks to version 2.0. Now, you can change the perspective of objects and even bend and warp them in various ways, just like you can in Illustrator. The only addition I'd like to see is the ability to make one object fit the shape of another object, kind of like Illustrator's envelope deformation tool. But this is still a very big win for Affinity in my opinion, and it really takes Designer to the next level. One of the greatest advantages of working with Adobe Illustrator is the Shape Builder tool, which essentially lets you create new shapes based on the intersecting areas of other shapes. This isn't something I would consider an essential tool for vector design, but once you get used to it, it's really hard to go without it because of how convenient it is. It's sort of like having the ability to make Boolean operations but in real time on your canvas. And thanks to version 2.0, this is now possible in Affinity Designer via their own new Shape Builder tool. The tool works just like it does in Illustrator, but with a few minor differences. In fact, I might even go as far as saying that Designer's Shape Builder tool is better than Illustrator thanks to the added tool settings that let you do things like exclude unused areas and create new objects entirely from your current objects. Another interesting new tool that was introduced to version 2.0 is the new Area Measurement tool, which is something I don't think I've seen before in any other application. It allows you to measure the surface area of an object based on its shape rather than the bounding box. So let's say for example that you have a circle that's 400 by 400 pixels in size. The bounding box around that circle would consist of a total of 160,000 pixels if you multiply the width by the height. But that's not the surface area of the circle though, because the circle doesn't include the corners. The new area tool allows you to see exactly how many pixels are within the circle and just the circle. So this could be a really handy tool if you're designing something like a floor plan for example, and you want to see what the square footage is of a particular room that you're designing. Affinity Designer version 2.0 comes with many other additions as well, like a knife tool, a measurement tool, x-ray vision, and more. I'll have a link in the description of the video to a full list of all the new features in case you want to check it out for yourself. And for those of you who are enrolled in my Affinity Designer Masterclass, yes, the course contents have been updated with the new features, so feel free to sign in and check them out whenever you're ready. 
So the burning question we're left with now is, how does Affinity Designer stack up to Illustrator after these new updates? Would I say that Designer is now just as good as Illustrator? Well, not quite. There's still some key features missing, like image tracing, mesh gradients, the blend tool, and 3D capabilities. But I would consider most of these bells and whistles that are nice to have, but certainly not necessary to make some incredible vector art. With these new additions, Affinity Designer has taken an enormous leap forward, and I'm really excited to use them and demonstrate how they work for you guys in the coming weeks and months. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below, and as always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.